Hey everyone, how's it going? I'm just going to make a quick little video showing you guys how I do my equipment system, um, the guns in particular, because I've got some comments about especially the guns over the past few years and the different games I've used this in. So originally the system I have for this was, I was started making it like two and a half years ago. Um, it was very bad then though. Really only supported guns, didn't support things like uh, melee like this one does. Um, didn't support secondaries. Um, and if I really wanted to, I could make a melee primary, but I just don't have that in the game right now. So I'm just going to show you basically the different uh, notable iterations of this system. Um, because a lot of them, like in the early stages, are really bad. Not worth talking about at all. So I think the first uh, half-decent iteration was a game I was making called Generic Multiplayer FPS. Um, it, it was okay. It uh, definitely wasn't great. Has a lot of issues. Not very fluid. But it definitely was basically the start of the, the system. Uh, another game I was making called Tactical. Um, still pretty bare bones, not the best, but I mean, it was definitely getting there. And you could see that I had, uh, I have the fists and you could have a secondary and primary and had support for other equipment slots. Um, and then it went on to a big jump was my 2019 FPS, which is where I made uh, the new recoil system, which is why I think it's probably the best one that I made so far, which is what I'm building off of now. It's, it feels very, very good to use. It's very easy to edit, very easy to tweak, get it the way you want. And then I had one for a slightly modified one, but not much different for a, like a Vietnam stickman game I was making. And then here we are today with this one, at least like the most up-to-date version um, and definitely the best so far. So I'm just going to walk around, shoot some guns um, and just tell you about different things. Hand cannon here, you can see all procedural. There's no animations here. Then I also have different aiming modes. So um, there's basically hip, aim, slide, and then slide aim. So this is hip right now. Um, you have your accuracy, and then I have the aim, and then I have the slide, and then I have the slide aim, which are all different. Another cool little weapon, the staple gun. Same deal, it's got an aiming, it's got a sliding, and then it's got a slide aim. All different. Uh, I'll show you some of the other ones real quick. So another good one. Here's a good example of the system, the burst gun, and then another good example of the equipment system. That's a bug. Don't look at that. Um, but how it works and how easy it is to tweak things. So the burst gun, which took me about five minutes to make uh, just because the system is already set up for it and there's no extra code required because everything is already in there. So literally all I have to do is I have delay between shots and then I have um, the first shot delay. So, and I can make it fully auto or semi, it's fully auto right now. Um, that's also a bug in the bottom right, don't pay attention to that. And then, you know, same deal, slide, aim, slide, aim, stuff like that. So, and then we also have the sword, uses the exact same equipment system, um, albeit a different, like, base for the equipment, but, which is, it's the reason why I can have a gun or a sword as my secondary and everything works fine. All of it's networked. Um, it already does all that for me as well. And, you know, swing, have some custom impact particles and noises, stuff like that. Uh, and I'll show you with what I did with the, the sword collision too, because it's pretty cool. So we'll start out with the guns. Uh, let's see if I get another good example. Um, so I think another good one is probably the cheek clapper. And then the secondaries aren't too interesting right now. So the cheek clapper is a shotgun. And this is already set up as well. All I have to do is tweak two variables. But yeah, you can see multiple impacts spreads all over the place. So this is all set up with two variables, the bullet count and the ray count. For each bullet, there's an equal amount of rays associated with it. So if I have eight bullets and eight rays, it's going to shoot eight rays per bullet, which is what this is doing. I'm shooting one bullet with eight rays. And then the accuracy handles the rest. Uh, but I could do, I don't know, 10 bullets, 10 rays, be 100. Uh, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. It's really unique and dynamic. Um, this took, again, like five minutes to set up because it's already in there. Um, another good one is the Sixer, which is a Magnum or revolver. Um, and this just has a delay before it shoots and a, a charging sound, which is already all set up. I could add it to any other weapon if I wanted to. And I had a railgun, actually, but it's kind of terrible, so I just took it out. But You can hear it. There's a, there's a delay, and then there's a... A sound between each delay. 
And again, this is all dynamic. I can set it up. I can turn it off or whatever. Pretty sure that's basically it for all the interesting guns. You know, you have your basic SMG. Pretty standard. Have a sniper rifle. You know, same old, same old. Um, another thing as well is all of the aiming. Um, this is me just setting the position, the rotation, depending on what I'm doing. Um, same with this. It's not obvious here though. Um, another good one is probably the sixer. As you can see, it'll go in. It rotates a little bit. And then the same thing when I'm sliding and when I'm slide aiming. So I think that's pretty much it for just the how it works or like just the showcase. I'm just going to go over all the variables now and basically how I did it. So start things off. Um, each equipment has a base. So I need to find it. Uh, here we go. So each equipment has this equipment base right here. All this equipment base is, it's a scriptable object with all of the basic things I need. So the name of the equipment, the description, uh, the prefabs for the FPS and the TPS. So whatever ones we'll be holding, whatever ones the other players will be seeing, um, what handle it'll go in. Uh, the world prefab isn't in this game, but that's basically just if I want to spot an object in the world. Um, don't really need that. And then we get the animation layer, um, which basically just determines what animation layer obviously in the the third person one will be using so the other players can see what kind of gun it is uh, and we have like animation mode so this is the same thing up here you have the big gun gun pistol melee um and then you have overrides fov this basically just tells it hey we want to change the fov with this gun so don't override it if this is set to false it automatically sets the fov so you don't have to deal with it um then we have an icon name because mirror doesn't like to serialize sprites for some reason so i just have to load it HTML with the icon uh, so like the equipment dequip time, the equipment type, primary, secondary, um, the movement speed multiplier, uh, the equipment description, class name, stuff like that. And then this is a scriptable object. So I, like with these up here, I just create them um, as their own things. So this is uh, equipment gun, uh, the sword is an equipment melee. So from each of these all derived from the equipment base. So the equipment gun derives from the equipment base. So it's already a scriptable object. Um, and then I just have the create asset menu. So first thing is the speed while you're holding it, while you're aiming, while you're shooting. Um, we have the fire mode, the runs per minute, the first shot delay and the shot delay. Uh, which I'll, get, I'll get to all these and I'll showcase all the guns and all their specific parameters. So the fire rate is just 6EF divided by RPM. We have a range of the gun, the layer mask for shooting, the bullet count and the ray count. Um, these two are basically, if the system thinks you're shooting or not, um, it's just, it's very specific. It comes in handy. Um, usually just leave it alone though. Uh, we have accuracy. First shot, always accurate. It's true by default. Um, so that's pretty self-explanatory. And then I have the initial spread, uh, the increase per each shot, and then how quickly it changes. And then the accuracy multiplier when we're aiming. Uh, and then we have ammo and reloading. So and we have damage, we have max and minimum damage. And then we have a, um, damage drop-off distance. I really should be using an animation curve here, but I just use the float and it's kind of finicky right now. But basically, if the, the thing you hit is further out in this distance, the damage will start really, slowly start to drop off until it hits the minimum and then it sits there. Headshot multiplier, secondary body multiplier. This is for things like arm and legs. Um, the torso is just the main body. And then we have a uh, method to get the damage, which returns a float. We basically pass it in the distance and the tag of the collider. So we have an initial multiplier here of one. And then if we hit a head, we're going to multiply it, or we're going to set it to the headshot multiplier. If we hit a body, or if we don't hit a body, then we're going to set it to the secondary multiplier. So if we do hit a body, it'll just be one, i.e. the torso. And then we check if the distance is greater than the damage drop-off distance, then we get the max damage. We set a variable to the max damage. We get the percent of where the distance is at. Um, and this is just debugging it. And then we clamp it 0 to 1, and then we multiply the damage by that, and then we set it to the minimum damage. And then we multiply it by our multiplier up here. So even if our damage is the minimum of 18, if we had a headshot, it's still going to multiply it by that 1.35. Otherwise, if we're in range of our damage drop-off, then we're just going to return max damage multiplied by the multiplier. Then down here, this is where all the procedural stuff comes into play. So our part of it, we have something called kickback, which is basically uh, what guns are doing when you shoot them and the, there's recoil on the gun. Um, the way it shifts backwards, shifts up, rotates, stuff like that. So these all determine that. Um, the kickback time is basically how long it'll last for. Uh, the higher it is, the longer it'll go on for, and the smoother it'll look. The lower it is, it'll look 
much more sharp um, and way more aggressive. Depends on the gun. Uh, the aim multiplier, so if you're aiming in, you don't want it to be as strong for some guns because it just looks like it's hitting your character behind his face. He's going through his eyes. Um, I think most of the guns are using one, just so it gives them weight. Uh, we have the position amount. Um, and I'm probably I'm probably just going to show most of these in the inspector actually because uh, it'll make more sense when we, once we get into them. Recoil recoil time is the exact same thing as up here. The longer it is, the smoother it'll be. The shorter it is, the sharper and more aggressive it'll be. Um, and I'll show the rest of these in there as well. Besides these, these are just variables for lerping. Uh, the aim folder is basically uh, for each uh, like aiming state we have. So I have a hip aim, sliding, and sliding aim. Just have a position, rotation, sensitivity, molten, and then a zoom percent. Uh, we have an aim time in seconds, um, rotation smoothness towards how quickly it rotates, and then the FOV time. And then we have audio down here. Basically, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, this is just getting input, getting shoot sounds, stuff like that. So that's pretty much it for how it works, um, or just all the variables. So now I'm just going to show you all the variables in play. So here's the PUP2 that I'm using right now. Uh, we have the speeds for how quickly we move with the gun we have the aiming speed molt i had like 15 you know move really fast while i'm aiming shooting speed molt so while i'm shooting i'll go five times as fast if you really want that the fire mode is on auto right now so if it's set at the semi i have to click for each shot um then the rpm which as you might guess yeah and then we have the delays so the first shot delay is zero i can make it so it's one As you can see, it starts lagging behind because it's just taking forever. So, um, and then we have the shot delay, which is basically how long it takes in between shots. So, changes to 0 0.1. Pretty cool. We have the range, so explanatory. I have the shoot mask, which, you know, just a layer mask. The bullet count and the, the shot count. So, and then I guess I mixed these up earlier. It's actually, uh, for each shot, there's a, a, not a bullet with each shot associated with this number. So, I'm shooting three times. And I have one ray for each one, but if I set to 15, that's 15 rays per shot. And you see my particles are bugging out because I don't have any more in the object pool. So it's kind of chilling. Um, and I can make it so I have 15 shots with one burst. Uh, I have the, the accuracy, make this really big. Like that. Uh, shot increase, so I can make it so way more inaccurate. Uh, the spread time. So it'll just be really, really slow. I have the aim accuracy mullet, so I can make it way more inaccurate when aiming, or way more accurate. And now we're getting to the kickback, which again, the kickback is how the gun moves um, and rotates, positions, stuff like that. So, like I said, the initial one is how sharp it'll be, um, how slow it'll be. So if I put this to like 0.15, you can see it's very, very slow, not aggressive at all, but that's at 0.1 right now. Very aggressive, right? 0.5 is what I had it at, which is pretty good. So the aim multiplier is basically how much they'll be more aiming. Uh, and then we have the position amount, which doesn't work because I'm clamping the variables anyways. So this thing is kind of useless. And then we have the kick kickback position absolute, which basically if I set this to one, it'll only return or it'll only kick back uh, that variable I'm saying. So these are set to zero. So it's going to go either negative one or one, like within that range. Uh, because I have it set to 1 on Z, it's only going to go backwards. If I set this to 0, so it's not absolute, you can see it'll go forward, it'll go backwards, like that. And I can set it so, well, these are 1, so it's only going to move to the right and up. Or, you know, I can do it the other way. And then we have a clamp for how far they can move in each direction. So, as you can see, if I set this higher, it'll start going all over the place. And then I have the same thing for the Z. And then we have the smoothness for, uh, like, when we first initially do it. So this is pretty much how explanatory the lower it is, the slower it'll be, the higher, the faster. Recovery, so usually I like to set this pretty low just because it gives the gun some weight. If you set it really high, it kind of looks like it just too uh too light, I think. And then we have the rotation amount. So I can up this. You can see it's gonna rotate all over the place. And then we have the same absolute values. So since this is set to one, it's only gonna rotate um minus 0.5 on x, so I have this set to zero. You know, they go up or down. Um, then I have set it to one and one on the z, so if I turn these up, as you can see, it goes all over the place. 
And then we have the rotation smoothness and recovery, the same deal here. And then the recoil. Uh, so recoil is interesting. It's definitely not the best system. I really found a better way to do it. Uh, it does work. And I mean, most of my games are in tactical hardcore shooters, so I don't need the best recoil system. Because um, as you can see, if I turn this recoil time up, it kind of just sits there. It hangs, but uh, for the most part, depending on the gun, it's okay. Never had any issues with it, so... Basically, I have the absolute again, so since I have this X set to 1, it's only going to rotate minus 3. Um, if I have it set to 0, it's going to go up or down, as you can see. Um, and I can have it set to like negative 15, so I can get more recoil. Um, then I have it set to 3 and 2 on the Y and Z, so if I turn these up, more sideways recoil if I turn this up. Uh, this basically just rotates the camera and gives it much more of a weighty feel. So as you can see, this is with the 3 or 2, and then this is with 0, so it just makes it feel a lot better. And then we have the smoothness and recovery. And then here's the aim time, or sorry, the aiming stuff. So we have the how long it'll take for you to aim in. So I turn this up. Take me 0.5 seconds, aim in. Um, and turn back down. There you go. Uh, the rotation smoothness is basically how quickly the gunner rotate. I don't really have any of these set in here except for the sliding. So it's not the most interesting thing. Then I have the FOV time. So that'll determine how long it takes my FOV to go in. And then we have the variables like the hip, so I can change where the gun's position at, I can change the rotation it's sitting at, uh, stuff like that. I have the sensitivity mult, so we can turn this up to look really fast. Well, I have the zoom percent, but it doesn't work with uh, the hip because it doesn't aim by default. So then we have the aim, so explanatory, I can turn the sensitivity mult way up while I'm aiming so I can look all over the place. I can turn the zoom percent all the way up and you'll see it'll, it calculates of a V for me, so I don't have to, you know, do anything. Um, 55%, say 125 kind of bugs out so that's pretty much that um we, of course we have the positions too so i can aim in and they'll go way off to the right as you can see kind of disappears i think it so rotates up in the air stuff like that same with the sliding same with the sliding aim and then here's all the audio stuff um so for the most part that's basically it for the the guns uh i'll show you the uh some of the scripts i guess but how i do it so for each equipment that we hold, I have something called Equipment Fizz, which basically, I don't know, call it like Equipment Physical, so when you're holding it, this is what every equipment has, so uh, this stuff is deprecated, don't use it anymore. Basically, every every first person object you hold, every gun you hold, any sword you hold, they all derive from this class. Um, this is because I have so many common variables in here, and this is basically what, this is like the glue of the equipment system, because it relies on this to basically do everything. Um, so I'll show you that in a little bit, but we just have some stuff like the basic player values. We can get some references, the object color, so I can set the, basically the arms colors to the player color. We have the controller of the player, and then we have a variable if we can sprint. You'll see this later. Equipment manager, ne audio networker. Um, we have the third person one we have on the equipment base. Uh, this is the reference equipment. And then we have the IK viewer, which is deprecated as well. Uh, but that was just for IK, uh, but I didn't really use it too much. So then we have NBT, which I don't really use too much, but this is basically, you can set the NBT. I totally didn't copy it from Minecraft. Um, when you spawn the guns, when you give it custom values right off the bat, and then when the world gets, or when the gun gets created in the world, it'll uh, keep these NBT values, but I'm not using these in this game. Many variables, like if the pause menu is open, if we can input. So then we have some voids here. So it's just init. Um, and then when we initialize, we check our variables. And go down here and we basically just get the player the camera we set all the instances and all that and then we have the initialize mbt don't really use it and then we have a lot of virtual voids here for uh when the equipment is reset so on reset reset equipment when we enable it we want to set all the color objects and we have a virtual void for equipping it um and then we just go down here and we set some stuff that's really irrelevant for the most part it's all back end um we dequip same deal um, and then we have update equipment. This is basically the update method for this base class because for whatever reason, derived classes, uh, their base classes, they don't like to run, at least in Unity, their update or start function. So I have to call it manually. It's all fine though. So we just set like the running for uh, sprinting in the animator. Uh, some other variables we disable. We set the animator position rotation to zero because otherwise Unity bugs out. Don't really know why it's still a bug. It's been there for a long time. So that's every... Um, like FPS equipment you hold. So like this sword right here derives from uh, equipment fizz. So does all of these guns. 
So I'll go and I'll show you the the gun first. So we're in Fizz Gun now. Pretty long class, as you can see, script. Just for a gun. So again, it derives from the equipment Fizz. We have some actions here for when we shoot and we hit something when we miss. Um, we have reference to our equipment as a gun. So again, this calls the equipment base and we just cast it as a gun because as you saw, the equipment gun derives from the equipment. So I can cast it and it has all the same variables as the base equipment. Um, we have stuff like the muzzle flash we're using, the current ammo, the current extra ammo, the custom kickback parent, which basically determines what object uh, the kickback gets assigned to. So in this case, I have it um, as just any, I have a custom kickback. So this is going to get transformed as opposed to the object um, because I usually don't like doing that. It depends on what I'm doing, but uh, I think I use aiming for the, the base one, so I don't like to modify anywhere else. So then we have some variables for shooting, the shots delay is active, shooting check, reset time, reloading, aiming, and our current accuracy. Uh, some other unimportant stuff. Uh, when we awake, we set the ammo. When we initialize, we set the FOV, the uh, custom kickback parent, or the one we're going to use. When we enable, we call the base classes on enabled, so we can go through here. When we set equipment, we set all this stuff back to default, we equip. Uh, we basically check if the color routines I have set are not equal to null, so they are currently active, then I stop them. Um, so this is if we're shooting or re we're reloading, so if I switch weapons or they, I de-equip a weapon, um, it'll stop those, they don't keep going. Uh, we set the spread, the audio wrapper, stuff like that. Same with the de-equip. So next we have the update method, which is basically where everything is handled for the most part. A lot of it's pretty messy, um, I've yet to organize it. It's kind of just gotten more and more messy over the years. Uh, for the most part, it's pretty okay, though. A lot of it's categorized. Um, definitely not as messy as my player controller script, which is just an absolute nightmare to work in because I have not yet uh, organized it. But, you know. So back in here in the update, we call the bases update equipment. So we just do some stuff in here. Uh, we have the speed multiplier, which we set the target speed mult, stuff like that. So for aiming or shooting, stuff like that. For current ammo is greater than zero, um, we just get, we basically check if we can use the equipment. So this returns um, true if the pause menu isn't open. So, and we're not reloading. And then we get the input of the gun. Uh, we check if we can shoot and we're allowed to input. Then we basically just start the cut routine of shoot, which is down here, which we go through. Um, this is for the charging sound. We call my the audio wrapper that I have, which is the networker. Um, we just tell it play on audio source 6, the charging sound, the volume, and then a pitch. And then if we check if our first shot delay is greater than zero, we set the shot delay to true. This is basically if I want the, the first shot of the gun to have a delay, which the real gun I did, I had like a almost full second delay. So then we, we wait for the first shot delay. And then we basically go through for each shot we have, we're going to cast a ray. Um, and then we click where we call on shoot for all of these. So And on shoot, we have some... A lot of random stuff in here. Um, I think the most notable are like is setting the kickback, setting the rotation of the kickback, setting the recoil. Um, so that's pretty much it for that. Um, and then we call like this command so I can call the um, the on shoot for the equipment that I have, and then it'll set the muzzle flash for all the other players. So we can go back, and then we just do all this like the spread. Um, we get the real position of the screen. We basically just set it right there. We cast ray from the camera. And we cast the ray out and then we hit something. We call on hit. Which in here we do all this stuff. We check if we're hitting a player. If we're hitting the melee collider when we're blocking, we just return. Um, if we hit a player, we do all the damage. If we hit a rigid body, we add some force. When we shoot, I already showed you that. Um, update MBT, which I'm not using in here, um, but it does work. Then I have the reloading, which, uh, this script's pretty messy. Um, and I, I deleted most of the code, I think. Oh, no, I didn't. So this is all the code for reloading and, uh, basically decreasing the extra ammo we have and making sure we don't go into negative, basically just all the math. So all these variables, um, all I'm doing right now is just setting the gun to max ammo because I don't have any extra ammo. It just get, kind of gets reset. So I just play the reload sound and then I wait for the reload time. And then once the reload time is up, then wait the post reload time. If reloading is false, reload code is equal to null. I just cancel the code routine basically. And then we cancel the reload when we, um, basically when we switch. So we stop the audio source from playing. So that's basically it for the gun. Uh, there's a lot to comprehend. Um, 
I think for the most part, though, it's pretty pretty solid and pretty easy system to use once you know what variables do what. And I think a lot of them are pretty self-explanatory. And a lot of them uh, you'll change and you'll see the difference immediately. So then we'll go on to the swords. I already showed you me swinging the swords around, so I'm not going to show that again. So for the swords, we have the same base equipment stuff because, again, it derives from equipment base. So we have all of these variables in here. And then we come down to the actual sword stuff. So we have a, a swing rate. Um, it's basically just how long we have to wait between swings. We have a variable. I'll play this actually just to show you how these work in real time. So if I go to my sword, I can make it so I can swing way slower or way faster. So if I turn this up, I got to wait 15 seconds between each swing. Um, I can make it so we can swing while running, which I'll show you that once we're done waiting. And then I have the collision mask with a sword. I have the collision detection, um, which I'll show you in a minute. But it's basically, um, I forgot what game it is. I learned it on Reddit, how they how they did the collision detection for their swords. It's basically you, you get a number of uh, points in the sword and you cast rays from the last frame in the direction the, the thing was going. Um, that way it always, it'll always hit something and it doesn't use any actual colliders, which is really, really great because it's not clunky at all. It's 100% reliable and 100% accurate all the time, every time. So it's pretty great. Um, so I can make it so we can swing while running. So as you can see, run around and swing. So I'll show you this in a minute, but I can set the, the ray length like 15 and you can see. Nowhere near, but it's still hitting. Um, the track history is basically how many it'll save. This isn't used for most things, but debug. Um, and actually, if I show you the player. So, oh my god, that's pretty. Alright, so this is all the, basically all the collision code. So, if I go in here and hold the sword out. As you can see, we have all the rays. We basically have a, a start and an end point, so it'll calculate those in between based on the number of rays. Um, and then when you can see when we swing, that's our track history. Um, mostly just to see how the swing is working and make sure it's working right. As you can see, works great. See the arc right there. Um, I have some other stuff like if we can block. So can't block anymore. Now I can block. Um, we have the damage, custom impact. So this is basically just calling the pool that I have um, called anime impact. So if I go to my pool system, uh, wherever that's at. Don't really remember where that is. Particles. So you can see you have these pools here. It's called Anime Impact. It references this object pool right here, which um, has all of these cool impacts in it. So that's that. Um, and if this is set to nothing, then it's just going to play the default ones. But I, I figured this sword, this sounds cool enough. It needs a, some cool particles with it. Equip sounds. Um, I made all of these on my own because I couldn't find any and I tried to make the a sword sound as big and impactful and cartoony as possible. I think it turned out pretty good. And then I have swing sounds, so as you can hear. And I made the swing volume, which is self-explanatory. Make it way quieter and leave impact sounds, so it doesn't matter what it hits, it's still going to play the noises, which are uh, just these. That's that. Um, that's pretty much it for the swords. Um, I'll show you the collision system a little bit more. So let's go in here real quick. I'll just click on the sword. So as you can see, this is based on the number of rays the, the sword has. So I can change this to like four and then rebuild the rays. And as you can see, we just have four points now in between the start and the end. And then I can change it so I can have like, I don't know, like 24 and then I can rebuild it. Um, you don't really need this many. It's just for just for show. Basically, what it does, I'll show you the actual code a little bit because it was surprisingly simple. I thought it'd take a lot more work to get it done. Um, so basically what we do is I have a variable. So once I swing, we basically set a variable. So we, we are checking collision. Where am I doing this at? Oh, no. So what I'm doing is I have an animation event on the swing animation for when we start and when we stop swinging. So I can basically determine where the rays should start at and when they should stop. So once we start, we're recording, we're de detecting collision. So if we go back up in here, I have an if statement. So if we are detecting collision, um, I have a bull here. So if we haven't hit anything yet, we can hit something. This is basically just to stop it from hitting the same thing twice 
which it was doing a lot. So basically, I just go through our ray history. I get the current ray history. So this is a an array or a list of an array of rays. Um, it's <laughs> it's a really difficult to think about, but um, actually, I don't even think I can view it in here, can I? I'm pretty sure I can't. No, it's just it's that powerful. You know, you can't even see it. Um, so basically, this is this is basically so. Think of this as an entire uh, like ray history right here. So if I swing, we're going to create one of these for each of these rays right here. And then the next iteration will be another one of these. So basically, it just keeps track. So we go through all these, and we basically set a new one. And then we draw a ray so I can see it. And then we have a hit. And then if we haven't hit anything yet, um, we hit something, and then we call on hit, which then comes down here. Do some stuff, blah, 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 play some audio, stop the swing, stop the collision detection. Um, this just updates the rays in that button so I can see the new uh, the new gizmos here. Um, then I have when we swing animation, stuff like that. We have the position vectors. It basically just goes through and gets all these points individually based on the start and the end. Um, so this is just simple math of basically using LERP, um, which I didn't think about because LERP just uses the time. So you can basically just calculate uh, the percentage um, of where you're at um for like the maximum of rays like i have here so i need to use c and it just uses a time so zero i don't know whatever that is so here's a better example because i can actually count if i set it to 10. uh you set that to 10 and then rebuild them so you got one point or zero point one point two point three point four point five point six point seven point eight point nine point ten so or one point oh so that's basically what that does um Pretty simple. I'm actually surprised at how simple it was to get down and just learn. It probably took only like half an hour. Um, so that's basically just how that works. Um, and then I'll show you the equipment system now because this is basically this is basically it. This is what can basically controls all of it and makes sure it works fine. So I'll show you some variables real quick. Uh, let me find the player. Players right here. So basically, it's this bad boy down here. Uh, there's not much to them, actually, believe it or not. Basically, we have an array of the held equipment we have. So our primary and our secondary. Um, we have the primary and the secondary, what we're currently holding. Um, so like that. So we have all these basic variables. Um, the crosshair stuff up here. And we just set all of the instances and like references up here. Um, this is basically when we set the our equipment. When we respawn, we disable, we destroy all of our equipment, so we can just get new ones and spawn new ones when we respawn. And then we have stuff like setting the text, and again, the FOV. Um, we set the FOV. If we are overriding the FOV, we set the equipment text. Um, we basically have the keybinds here for switching keys. So if I press 1, it'll equip 1, 2, it'll equip my secondary. If I press a V, it's going to equip my secondary. If I equip... Um, or if I press Q, it's going to swap the opposite equipment, like Counter-Strike or any Source game. I think it's very handy. I like it a lot. Um, other basic stuff here. We basically just set the, the camera's local rotation back to zero. Um, because what's happening in here is we're setting... Uh, we're basically setting it initially uh, for the recoil up here. Where is this at? Right here. So we basically were setting it um, ourselves, but we're never resetting it. So what happens is we need to reset it in here because if you reset it in this script, once this object gets disabled, it's not going to reset it anymore. So we reset it in here so it doesn't um, ever stop. It always gets reset. So we do all that, blah, blah, blah. Uh, we equip something. Uh, some random variables in here. If we, the one we want to hold isn't null, then uh, we, we basically equip it. If it is null, we just set it to so we were holding nothing. So basically have if we are holding a current equipment then we dequip it and we call all these things so it gets turned off and then we set our current equipment we set the equip time we set the animator we call on equip we set all of the network stuff we add equipment basically it just creates the object and then assigns it so we can reference it later we have another override here for the nbt which i don't use uh, we swap equipment this is for the world stuff so i'm not using this using this in this game but basically this just um, if you have an item on the ground, you pick it up, it'll basically just swap what you're holding with it. Um, this is stuff for the NBT. 
uh, first empty slot, which will return the first empty slot it can find with the equipment type. So secondary, primary. Uh, we get the index for the equipment we provide. Uh, we check availability if we can hold this kind of equipment. We check if we have the kind of equipment. We have an override for that and then another override for it. So that's basically how all that works. Uh, there's a lot to take in and a lot of it's not going to make sense because it's kind of held together by uh, duct tape for the most part. Um, and it's, it's pretty, all things considered, considering the main script is only 400 lines of code, it's pretty compact. Um, I think the main thing is just because everything is handled by the actual uh, equipment themselves. Nothing's handled in here. This is kind of just basically just telling them what to do when. These guys are doing the rest for it. So that's pretty much it for how all this works. Um, I think I've covered most of it. Uh, probably not any tutorial coming anytime soon or at all. Uh, just because it's so complicated in the first place. Um, and I don't know, I like to keep my secrets. Even though I just shared all of them. But if you have any questions about it, let me know because I'll, I'll answer them. There's probably some stuff in here I didn't go over. Some stuff you'd want to see. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's it. So... Thank you for watching. Again, any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll answer them. So, uh, yeah.